We make way for the Hall of Fame coach, John Thompson, working for uh, Westwood One NCAA radio color analyst, and he joins us the Continental Tire Coaches Corner. Good morning, Coach. Good to have you on board. How you feeling? Thanks, Dan. I'm feeling fine. If, feeling fine. Um, how would you sum up this Final Four? Wow. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think it's been very exciting because there have been a lot of things that occurred that folks didn't expect to occur. You know, we went through a whole process of the seeds, which I think, you know, uh, antiquated because I don't think that anybody gets into this tournament who can't play. It's just that they've been unseen. But I think it's been very exciting. Is the three good for college basketball? Pardon me. I didn't is, quite get you. Is the three-point shot good for ba- college basketball? Well, you know what I mean? I, I, I think it probably is is good, and it's not going anywhere. But, you know, I didn't like it when it came in personally because – uh, you know, I, I thought you should get more points for being able to make a layup than for hitting a jump shot, you know, and but that's my bias, and it's about the inside game. But you know, I think it has been exciting, and I, I certainly believe that Villanova would believe that it's good for <laughs> basketball. But should we move it to the international line as opposed to – it feels like college, the three, is, is a, a little too easy, whereas maybe international would be – uh, a little fairer distance. Your thoughts on that? Well, with the range that these kids have now, where the hell are you going to move it? Out to <laughs> half court? <laughs> you know, you, these guys, if, if you see, and you know that, you've seen this stuff enough, that these guys are shooting further and further back. You know, And even the girls' game now, they're shooting deep shots. So people keep talking about moving it back. How far back are we going to move it? How would you coach now with the three? Well, you know, it depends on which team you're playing against. And the reason Villanova's a problem is that they have five guys that can hit the three. But usually you can cheat off of somebody and put the emphasis on the person who is the three-point shooter or the persons. But it's highly unusual uh, that you get five guys that are capable of shooting or even guys coming off of the bench. So it's very difficult to just say how you would defend against it predicated on who you have on your team who's capable of making it. You have to make certain adjustments. Where do you stand on the one-and-done rule? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I find it very difficult to be for it, and I find it difficult to be against it in some ways because I think a person is entitled to make a living who's capable of making a living. But the myth of it is is that there are not so many people who qualify for leaving college early. We talk about it as if everybody's a superstar, you know, but I think it hurts more kids than it helps. It only helps the kids who should be going one and done. But there's so many kids today who think that it's a status sign and they leave school and they find themselves not educated. They find themselves poor. They find themselves in trouble. So, you know, it's a hard one for me, but I, I just think you should be able to, if you try to, 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 to leave school, be able to return, I think is a big thing. What about coming out of high school? Right. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm old school with that. You know, I, mean, I, I, I just have a problem, you know, with that because, I mean, you might be able to play basketball, but you, you sure are vulnerable to be exploited. You know, you know, the thing about all of this that bothers me is that folks talk about it like there's no value in an education. Certainly a person should, as I just said, have the ability to make a living who can make a living. But there is a value. I'm so sick of hearing people say that, you know, they play basketball for nothing. You know, the education is pretty doggone valuable to some folks. You know, and it should be valuable to them if they're not able to make the league. So all of this stuff is great if somebody can tell you the solution to how to resolve it for the kids who are not good. We talked to Patrick Ewing in San Antonio, and I said, if you were playing now, would you be one and done? He said yes. Um, Mm -hmm. How could you – would you keep him? I mean, you would understand his greatness, but as his coach, you know, that that fine line between – you know, is it better for you to stay one more year or is it better for you to go into the NBA? How would you have approached that with uh, Patrick? 
So you're hitting on exactly what I was alluding to before. You know, what, what I would tell him, if they ask me, should he leave, I would say no. They ask me, does he have to leave, I would say yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, and that's, I, I talked to a kid not too long ago, and I, I just would prefer not to use his name. And his dad said to me, should my son leave school? I told him no. I said, but he's got to go. Because he was assured of being paid. He was assured of the amount of money that possibly he could make. And you know as well as I know that next year they might evaluate him totally different and he would have lost out on the money. So Patrick, most definitely, you know, I've said that to Patrick, Alonzo, to Kim Bay Allen, and all of the kids that I had who I thought would go early, that if they were playing in today's basketball, that they would have left school right away or probably would not have come. But that's why it's not just a clear picture. You've got to know the circumstances that the kid exists under. He's John Thompson, Hall of Fame coach, joining us, Continental Tire Coaches Corner. Best player you coached against was who? I ne- I, that I coached against? Yeah. Oh, boy, probably. <laughs> All of those that beat me. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I would say, uh, oh, God, that's a hard one. You know, Ralph Sampson's got to be one of them, you know, because at the time with what I had, and I had Patrick. Patrick was a freshman at the time, and Ralph was an extremely, you know, talented player. But I've coached against a lot of very, very fine players in my career, and I, I don't know that I can just pinpoint one other than t- looking at his abilities, his agility, his size, his intelligence. I would almost say Ralph Sampson right now. Did you know Jordan's greatness when you were coaching against him? I don't think anybody anybody who says they knew Jordan's greatness is lying. You know, because I, I don't think anybody knew. They knew that he was good. You know, I you know, I told Michael that when he hit the last shot against us, we were guarding Worthy. We thought Worthy <laughs> was the one who was going to make the basket, and he fusses at me about it last when he sees me. He said, "Yeah, you don't, you don't didn't think I was that good, did you?" I said, "You're absolutely correct. We thought that we had it packed in to stop Worthy, but no, Michael, I, I think just got better and better and better. He was very good." Don't don't let me mislead you with that. But it's no way, and I talked to Dean before, and Dean knew that Michael was good, but it's no way that you can predict that anybody is going to be as good as those great, great players. I mean, did I think that Kobe was? Yes, I thought Kobe was a good player, but I didn't think he would be as good as Kobe. And Michael certainly, you know, I didn't think would be what Michael has become. Did you recruit Kobe? Uh, you know, I wanted to recruit Kobe, <laughs> but I knew that we didn't have, you know, an opportunity to get him based on the schools that were probably interested in him at the time. You get a feel for it. I mean, once you start to recruit a player, you find out his interests, you know who's after him, you know, and that kind of thing. Would I have liked to have had Kobe is the question. You're damn right I would have liked to have had <laughs> Last time you had the uh, itch to coach. Uh, now that's a good one. Uh, I always, I have the itch to coach now. I just don't have the itch to attend the practice. <laughs> you know, I, what if you I, just I, did I, games, I, coach? Excuse me? If you just did games instead of you know showing up oh, at practice. Oh, hell, I'd be like everybody else who coaches teams without going to practice. Yeah. You know, all you got all you got to do is walk over here to the Final Four and you talk to a little old lady. You know, Sister Jean coaches even. You know, now the, pre- the, pre- the preparation, the preparation, and you know that, the preparation for the game is probably one of the most difficult things that I found. And, and when I got to the point of feeling it was me and not the kids, I said, it's time to get the hell out of here you know, with it. And and it comes to that point, particularly with the practices, because you have to get involved with so many personal things as well as getting involved with the game itself. And But as far as the game is concerned, if I could just show up for the game and coach, and, and coach the game, heck, I could do that now. Did you keep any of those towels that you would always have on your shoulder? No, I didn't keep any special one, you know, uh, and, and I got that from my mom in the kitchen. You know, people ask me about the towel. You know, I had the towel on my shoulder 
before I realized it was on my shoulder because I did it habitually. When my mom worked around the house, she would always have a, a towel strung over her shoulders. And I started doing it until people started to say, you know, well, he's walking around. Now, people walk up to me th- th- today and ask me, where's the towel? <laughs> you know, I, I have no idea where the towel was. I didn't have one special one. <laughs> well, Guy Lewis had a, a special one, right? He had that, that, that checkered towel that, that he would have? Yeah, he did. He did. And Jerry Talk used to always yeah. have one that he bit on and chew <laughs> on, and it, you, know, <laughs> you know, all the time. And, and those are little things, you know, you do sometimes without realizing it, and then it becomes a habit. And, and, and most athletes are very superstitious. Most coaches are very, if I won a big game and knew I had, you know, a, a towel on my shoulder, you can believe me, I wouldn't take the <laughs> towel off again. <laughs> Give me the most important player for each team tonight. Whoa. <laughs> I, I don't think it's the most important player, to tell you the truth. I think it's their systems. Both of okay. these teams are here because of, of how well they execute themselves. You know, Villanova certainly, which seems to be everybody's favorite, and uh, Michigan the same thing, that, you know, they're, they're in a situation where they are very systematic. You know, I, I, I don't think that this game will come down to, you know, just what one player, certainly one player will, will contribute. But I just think that these are well all machines. They, they're great clinic teams that you would sit down and look at and demonstrate to kids that this is how you play basketball. They're unselfish. They play together. And, you know, they, they definitely are that way. Can you clear up something before I let you go? Uh, people talk about Villanova beating you guys in 1985 as – the greatest upset in college basketball history. I argue that Villanova was a whole lot better than people realize, and they'd played you twice during the regular season. And I, and I think that they were competitive games, close games. Uh, your thoughts on how we should define that win by Villanova over Georgetown? Well, it was a great win for Villanova. It goes without saying, but you're 100% correct. We played them three times, beat them twice, and the two times that we beat them before they beat us, there was one or two-point game. So, you know, they say it or described it as if it was something that was impossible for Villanova to do. You know, do I think we had a better team? Yes, I definitely think we had a better team, but I think Virginia's got a better team than anybody in the tournament. You know, when when you're in Mm -hmm. a one-game situation, you know, a lot of it depends on how you're playing, how they're playing. You know, at, at that time, Villanova shot the ball the way, almost the way Villan in that game, Villanova shot the ball almost the way Villanova shooting the ball right now. So, you know, it, it definitely, I don't want to take anything away from their victory. But uh, I tell you what, you know, with with Virginia losing, I'm sure sick of hearing people talk about the Villanova <laughs> game being the most upset. You know, although I feel terrible, I feel absolutely terrible. Uh, my whole tournament feelings have been with Virginia because I know that kind of thing can happen. But if you go through their body of work. They play better than anybody in the country in the yeah. total body of work, and then you lose one ball game because things just don't fall in place. But uh, you see how I avoided the Villanova <laughs> game in me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch film of that game? You know what? That, that's a damn good question. I, people don't believe this. I have never watched it. Never watched it. You know, the, the film of that game again. And that's just one of those things that – you know, you get involved, and I guess I'm going to get mature enough, <laughs> you know, to look at it one day. But, no, I've never watched it. Yeah, that doesn't sound like you say, you know what, I don't know, I got a couple of hours here. I, let me, let me, you know, cheer up and watch the 85 Villanova game. Um, no, no, heck no. I, I definitely don't feel that way, you know, that I want to be excited about. I kid, Roly God bless him, man. He and I have talked a lot, and, when, you know, when he was alive, and I'd kid him about it. He'd kid me about the game, various strategies that we employed. But we knew and had respect for each each one's ability. But but I think what happens a lot of times is that folks need to have an underdog, you know, that you need to have. That's why University of Maryland uh, 
was so significant to people because they hadn't heard about him and they won and, you know, that kind of thing. But that goes along with the sport. It's not something I sit around moan about and worry about. We we lost to Villanova. It's not, not, absolutely not. I just don't want to see it. <laughs> hey, uh, Coach, great to talk to you again. Have fun tonight, and thanks for joining us. I will. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. That's uh, John Thompson, Hall of Fame coach, Westwood One NCAA color analyst. He'll be on the call. Continental Tire Coach's Corner, whether you're a student, alumni, or all-around fan, Continental Tire has a tire that can get you to the big game. They are a proud supporter of 32 college basketball teams across the United States. Continental Tire shares your passion for the game. Show them your passion using hashtag Ode to Basketball. For more information, visit ContinentalTire.com. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.